zoom in, guys. Okay, girl, you look like something in your eye. Don't <laughs> do it like that. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> not quite like that. Not we'll work on like that. that. We'll work we'll, on we'll, that. We'll work on that off camera. Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where tremendous guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here with Niecy Nash. Niecy, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. I'm ready to couch surf. Now let's do this. Let's, let's see what's it. on. Oh my. <laughs> so you just received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but this is where it all began. Can I tell you something about this? Yes, tell me everything about it. Okay, here are the facts. I there was facts. a there was a different line that I was coming out to say. Every time I came out to say it, Whoopi Goldberg started laughing. The director started getting frustrated because she did it over and over. I go back in the bathroom. I start praying, Lord, please don't let her laugh again because I need this job. <laughs> I come back out. She laughs again. The line was just ridiculous. What was and the line? I don't remember, but let me tell you what I do remember. And hold, stop, everybody wait. Please, excuse me, time out, time out, cut. And everybody was like, oh my God, who is this young girl yelling cut? Because you're not supposed to do that. No. And, the, and the director said, what is the problem? I said, sir, I just need to say something. She is the one who is messing up the scene. <laughs> and Whoopi was like, no, you didn't. And I said, yes, I did, girl, because they ain't going to fire you. <laughs> and, he, and so I told him that the line was dumb and people don't talk like that. And he said, well, what do you want to say? I said, well, if it was me, I would be like, girl, is that your friend in the bathroom, child? She in there throwing up. He goes, Edith, we're changing the line. <laughs> and Whoopi said, you go, girl. Wow. And we changed the line in the movie. And the rest that was my first, my first good get. I love it. That is a great story. True. These are facts. Call Whoopi, somebody. Your girl's throwing up in the bathroom, Whoopi. That part. That part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Next up, that was a great story. See, my eyes were opened to the truth. Rainisha X. That's right. The truth. So this show the really put you on the comedy the map. Devil. This one made you a household name. Well, number one, it was so fun. <laughs> I can't um, even imagine. I laughed the most of any job I've ever done on that set. Really? Not to mention the fact that I had never did sketch, never did improv. I read that. Like, never you heard of the Groundlings. Never heard of like, Second City, none the of state, that. none of it. And you didn't even know what improv was. No, nope. I called my friend Big George. Well, he said, well, when you do sketch, it's more like you're doing characters. Okay. And you want to, you know, remember when you did this and remember you did that would fall underneath that category. And the improv is you have to make it up on the fly, but stay in character. And I was like, I've been arguing with my ex-husband for years. I could think on my feet. I got this. And I loved her because she put the big booty on the map. Now, that's pre-Kim K. The world could really use another Reno 911 movie. Is that happening? Is that a possibility? Please say yes. What I would tell you is that I would love it. Yes. I'm up for it. And every now and then we whisper between each other about the idea. Who's calling who saying we should make this happen? I'm calling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do y'all want me to do? The great truth. thing about this show who is wants that you clean house. <laughs> So you and your team <laughs> help declutter the most cluttered filled homes in America. How did you land this part? It's not even a part. You, How did you, you land you on this show? You pulled a clip with my mama in it. Well, well cuz I I cleaned her house too. You well, cleaned her house. The way too. I got this job. Yes. Was when I went in for it, mm -hmm. I could hear all of the women. It was a small casting area, so I could hear the other girls in the next room. What and so they would like, if there was an, you know, old lady getting rid of her things, what would you tell her? And I could hear all the girls. Well, I would just tell her the reasons why she should get rid of it. So, and I was like, that sounds so dumb. Oh my God, that's crazy. So when I went in and, and they and they asked me, and I said, well, it depends on who it is. And then here's the gotcha, gotcha. These girls, I made them zoom in on these lashes because they're magical. I was like, zoom in, huh? Because when you give a man that, uh -huh. he's going to give me what I want. Mm. And they were like, oh, you got the job. I said, thank you. Okay. And I did it for nine seasons. Right, next project. Do not let them off the phone. See if maybe we can <laughs> tell them what you did. This is truly one of the funniest episodes I've ever seen on television of anything. This was a favorite in our house. My husband and I watched this show faithfully. And this scene right here, Oh. Okay, full disclosure. Yes. This specific scene was the very first scene we shot of the entire thing. We started serious? right there. And they had given me the direction. 
that I was tough and that I was jaded and I've seen it all. Mm -hmm. And right before we started this scene, they said change in plans. Mm -hmm. You're a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. We want to discover this world through your eyes. And, uh. and note to self, this is what we want going on in here. White people are crazy. Uh. I was like, got it. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> that was what they told me. So I said, okay. And I got two Emmy nominations out of it. Huh? So How the white people are crazy. <laughs> and they paying these checks. Come on, HBO. This was a wonderful get. This was great. All right, next up. Selma. Okay, so the amazing Ava DuVernay, who's behind the extraordinary Selma, calls you up and you say what? Yes. Y yes, please yes. and thank you. Mm -hmm. She says, I saw you in a small scene in Getting On. And I said, that's my Richie Jean. Mm. And I said, yes, absolutely. And Richie Jean was really one of the unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. One of those people who helped close the freedom fighters, helps feed them, helps house them. Funny thing, I just, um, just this past week, I got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mm -hmm. and. And Congratulations, by the you. way. That's a big deal. Thank you. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And Wendy yes. Raquel Robinson said, and when she stood up on the mic, she said, you do know that Niecy Nash is the real life Richie Jean. Mm. I'm going to make sure everybody is good. I'm going to make sure you have what you need. I want you to be welcome. I want to feed you well. I want all of those good things for you. She was like, yeah, this is a Richie Jean party right now. Aww. And I was like, that part. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Project. What you got now? So you think the serial killer is still up there? Yeah. Yes. Right? <laughs> I thought she was hilarious. She's hilarious. You know what I mean? She's one of those cops that if 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 the if if she hears yelling coming from that way, she going that way. Yeah. She's you not running I mean? upstairs. No, 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 no. no, no. She's running no, out the door. No, let's get out of here. And this was this was I didn't know this particular scene was going to be so iconic. Me screaming. Shondell, why you got a <laughs> knife in your throat? But people still text and tweet me. Shondell, why you got a knife in your throat? That was a good time. But you know what? Ryan Murphy, he's another one who has me at hello. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Ava For DuVernay, sure. Ryan Murphy, yeah. when people like that call, you have to say yes and yeah. then figure out what the project is after yeah, saying later. yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Really? He's just a genius. Huh. He is, And I'm lucky he knows my name. And you know where he found me? Where? Clean house. What? At home. What? That's so random. Watching clean house. Ryan Murphy was at home watching clean house. And that's where he discovered me. All right, Ryan Murphy. Look at you finding talent in hmm. unknown places. Boys. Oh, there you go. We used to be all of that. He was the best TV husband. Fun, funny, and he did all my errands in real life. Aww. He had to, he did have to check me though. He was like, you do know I'm not your real husband, right? Right. <laughs> right, I'm like, can you get that stuff out the back of my car? I need this hung up in my dressing room. He's like, I got a real wife and I got to do her list. Cedric and Ryan Murphy uh, spoke at my star ceremony. They did. So, yeah. What was that moment like for you? Because I know that it was something that you had dreamed about. It was surreal. Mm -hmm. To you know, there. and I wanted to be present. So what I did was I gave my phone away. I wanted to experience the day. You were glowing. Thank you. So congratulations again. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about another show that's been really good to you so far. Which one? Okay. That one. Mm -hmm. Claws up. If you watch carefully, all of our nails on the show, our, our lead nail tech is Morgan Dixon. All of the nails she makes for us tell a story. Oh. Really? So they follow the character's journey or whatever they're going through at the time. I'm mad right there. My fingernails are black. Yeah. Like a black snake print, because I'm about to get low. Bring me up to speed on season two. The Russian mafia has fully infiltrated the nail salon. They've taken over. What else can you tell me? 
Well, you get to see a little bit more of the backstory, the behind the scenes of, of some of the girls and why they are the way they are. Mm -hmm. You know, season one, I was trying to get out of the Dixie Mafia. Season two, I'm leaning all the way in. Right. You can't escape, so you might as well. Perfect it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And get it, get, it, get it tight and get it right. Yeah. And I can tell you that these next four episodes, baby, you got to make sure your wig is strapped down. Really? Because let me tell you what. All of that, <laughs> all of the chin straps and whatnots, because it's gonna carry you fast. You're gonna be like, what just happened? Okay, really quick question. They're telling me I have to wrap, but I want to ask about this voice. Have you always had it? And when did you know it was unique and special? I have always, my entire life, sounded like I needed to drink a glass of lotion. <laughs> These are facts. I, I was like a six week old baby crying like I was smoking a six pack. What is happening? So I don't know, I'm not a, I wasn't a lover of it, but I have learned to just embrace all of the, you know what I mean? All of the, the parts that, you know, at first I was like, this is horrible. Mm -hmm. But now people tell me all the time, I didn't know if that was you for sure. And then I heard your voice. It's true. And you've ridden it all the way to the top. All the way. All the way to our couch. There we go. There we go. Nisi Nash, thank you so much for surfing by. Claws air Sundays on TNT at 9 p.m. 8 central. And see you next week on Couch Surfing.